Hello and welcome to This Week in Property. I'm your host Richard Swan and in today's show we were expecting to be showing you a cracking episode from a, a powerhouse up in the, the Kingdom of Fife as we like to call it in Scotland. There's a great gentleman up there by the name of Jay Turner who's doing loads of stuff in the property world and we have done a lot of filming with him. We had a great interview with him in the studio. We've also went out and about and done some special stuff with some of the projects he's doing. So they're going to be great shows to watch. There's actually going to be two very special episodes with Jay. However, as we all know, uh, today's climate has had a very big surprise, bring on a lot of consequences and impacts very, very quickly. So we've actually moved Jay's show. You're going to see it. You're going to love it. But it'll be in the next kind of couple of weeks. We'll keep you in tune with that. So if that's the show you were expecting today, uh, you just need to hold on and we will get Jay's fantastic story out to you. So what are we doing in the meantime? Well, with everything that's going on, COVID-19, coronavirus, you name it, you can call it all these different labels. It's something that a lot of people are obviously involved with from a business perspective, from a life perspective. There's so many impacts, so many consequences. What we wanted to do is get some content out there to you to try and help, to try and serve our wider community. We have a very special guest on the show, our one and only Paul McFadden, and we brought him in to do a special call with us today. Uh, so we can try and just help people out there. Paul has been doing so much stuff to support our clients People who are in our protege membership programs, people who are in our Platinum Inner Circle, they get to see him one-on-one. -on -one. They get to see him with very regular updates. We have very special calls that the last one actually last week went on for longer than two hours where he was taking questions and helping people prepare and recover and getting their mindset right. And we realized, listen, this is great for our clients. We've got to keep doing this. This is fantastic. But what about everybody else out there? What about people who are you know, watching and listening to This Week in Property? You know, what can we do for them? And that's why Paul very kindly has agreed to put some time aside today and try and help people out. So, Paul, first of all, good morning. Thanks for coming in. And you've came off a very busy weekend, but a very strange one for you with an event in the, in the office. Can you explain what has happened? Yeah, for sure. So yeah, I'm glad to be on your Richard. I'm looking forward to this. I think with everything that's going on, then we need to really prepare so we know what to what to take from all of this and how we can actually move forward, adapt and thrive through all of that. And that's what we did this weekend. So this weekend we had, uh, we were supposed to be running our flagship property jumpstart event in Glasgow. So we've been on a little bit of a, a UK tour. We've been over in Ireland. Then we jumped over to London and then with all the different things that have been happening and then different closures and so forth, it was the right decision to actually not go ahead with the event in person. So, which is strange because Glasgow normally we have hundreds of people who come and I love the live events. I love the interaction. I love getting to meet people and, um, and just sharing what I've got to talk about and so forth. So it was like, Literally inside a 24 hour window, we were having to, um, we still wanted to do the event, we still wanted to deliver the content, we still wanted to make sure that now more than ever that they got the right knowledge that's going to help them through this. So we decided to run a live stream from the office. So um, we had the tech team in, which was Martin. <laughs> so we had one person in. <laughs> and Martin was a superstar. He was in and then uh, making sure all the tech was working away. And then we streamed live for two days. And the interaction and engagement on the, the live broadcast was unbelievable, it was brilliant. Really enjoyed it. I felt like I had a live audience, which was good. After staring at a camera for, for two full days, <laughs> you know, it, it was still good to get that interaction. So it was great fun. And I think that we've really got the information out there to those who really need to know what to do in uncertain times. And hopefully, hopefully we can cover some of that stuff today. Yes, definitely. And it was, it was really, I, I was tuning in, I was watching from afar, which was great. All their social distancing was uh, in play for sure. Uh, but it was great interaction, great questions and stuff. And it was a, a brilliant new test of how to very, very quickly respond to things. So it was, it was great how the team managed to do that for you and how you managed to also do that for the, the people who had bought tickets and they were all excited and they wanted the content. Well, you were able to do that. You were able to deliver, which was brilliant. But yes, uncertain times. Panic. Panic buying, toilet rolls, my goodness, you can throw out so many wee hashtags on this particular one. COVID, coronavirus, impact, shutdowns, lockdowns, um, bailouts, all sorts of things. And we'll, we'll dig into lots of it. 
But the thing I want to start on is you have personally been talking for a long time now through the internal things that we have with our own clients, through a lot of the output that you're doing to the wider public through your YouTube channel. People haven't subscribed to that. Make sure you go to YouTube, look for Paul McFadden Wealth, subscribe, and you'll see these updates that Paul does a lot. And you've been talking about your own view, your own experiences, your own opinions, your own analysis. Also, some of the big economists that you have a close tie-in with uh, that you consistently follow with, and they've been talking about the big crash, the big recession, a real big market hit. But is it correct to say that this thing just now, this period just now, yes, there's businesses facing things, they're facing problems, people will have struggles and so on and so forth. There is a big economy hit, but this is not the thing that you've been constantly talking about. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, that's correct. So there's no question that we're going to be walking into a recession probably sooner rather than later off the back of what's happening just now. But... We need to understand there's so many things at play just now. Now, one thing that I do, and I don't know if it's, I don't know if I'm just sad or what, but I like to study cycles. I like to study um, economics, uh, what makes the world work, what makes an economy work. And uh, when you step out, rather than just looking at it in a micro level, when you actually step out and look at it from a larger you know, macro level, you can actually see cycles. Now, we could never have predicted what just happened. I don't think anyone could have even predicted that. So what we're going through right now is more of a global financial, uh, more of a health, a global health crisis rather than a, a global financial crisis. So big difference, we've got a global health crisis right now, and that comes with a lot of you know, uncertainty because we haven't faced something like this for quite some time. And that has a knock-on effect into the economy right now. And you see what the governments are doing. I know what the UK is doing here, which we can maybe get into and talk about that. You see what's happening in the States with over a, you know, a trillion dollar stimulus package. You can start to see what's happening across Europe and so forth. So all the stimulus that's going to be getting pumped into the marketplace to really just help businesses to continue to grow, to help the economy to continue to move, that's going to have an effect. And then that there is going to lead us into not coming out of the, the kind of global health crisis into a global financial crisis. So we can maybe go a little bit deeper on that, but that's the kind of difference at the moment. This is maybe like a 9-11 event in the sense that what happened then came out of nowhere and that really shook the stocks and share market, which is the most volatile of all commodities out there in the sense that it's just up and down. It just takes an event to really you know, knock off 10, 20, and in the moment, you know, over 25% drop since their all-time high recently in the stocks and shares market. You know, you see different things like gold having a sell-off just now as well. Um, Bitcoin looks like it's having a little bit of a rally just now because people are freaking out and going, what do we do? Do we just go to cryptocurrency? But again, there's just too much volatility around all of this. There's so much uncertainty, especially with all the fear that's been built up with the media. Some of it rightly so for people to take things seriously. Others um, really starts to really make things a bit more dramatic and that fear then consumes people mm -hmm. and then it leads people to not be able to know what to do. There's, you know, some of the leadership right now is questionable because of the, the conflicting information and so forth that's getting said and not getting told what to do with conviction. It's almost slightly vague and make your own mind up. And when they've got all that uncertainty, what ends up happening is people can't make decisions. And, and this is where leadership, more than anything, is going to make the biggest difference on how we react as an individual, how we act in our community, and how we act in the wider scale. Yeah, definitely. And what you touch upon there, uh, two things pop into my head. You take me off on two tangents there. Number one, that, that focus on leadership. That's something you really stressed to our protege clients uh, this week. Uh, because when we had that get together online, it was all safe. Obviously, it was a, one of these calls that we're doing just now, and you're able to quickly pull everyone together away from the televisions, away from everything else, and actually help them. And that's one of the things you focused on. You spoke about them. You, you actually made them stand up and say, "Well, what are you going to do? You know, how are you going to lead? How are you going to lead your family? How are you going to lead your own personal 
financial economic structure? How are you going to lead your business? Have you, have you got a company? Have you got staff? You know, are you going to lead the community around you? How are you going to help people? Are you going to reach out to people who will be suffering? You know, what are you going to do? Are you going to go into a shell and crumble? Are you going to panic and freak out because you're watching, you know, Sky News 24-7 and all the sensationalism that gets thrown in on top of facts, on top of truths? Or are you going to stand up? Are you going to step up to the plate? That was, that was a big, big thing that stuck out for me when you were talking about that. The second thing is, uh, and funnily enough, it ties into one of the, the kind of podcasts I've been listening to just now. Uh, Andy Stumpf, one of the former Navy SEALs, was on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he was explaining this exact thing about emotion, emotional responses. He says, if the emotions start to take control, then you're screwed. Because however clever you are, however switched on you are, however organized you are, if your emotions take over, then your decisions are not going to be correct. It's it's just going to be a toss of a coin because you've let something else jump in ahead of you rather than having that space to make a proper analysis, a proper decision for, for kind of looking at things. Now, you also mentioned another word, volatility. So, all of those things are right. You're, you're totally right. My goodness, if you if you listen to the Financial Times briefings and you hear stock market just going up and down like a yo-yo, you mentioned cryptocurrency, etc. How does that affect, or how do you see the property world? Because you know we're on this week in property. We're we're dealing with a lot of viewers and listeners who invest in property. So that volatility we're seeing in these other areas. How do you look at that in the property bubble? Yeah, that's a good one because it's the most common thing I'm getting just now. I've been inundated with messages, not only from my clients, but from people who follow us online and social media. My email inbox is full at the moment. People being concerned and worried. And, well, Paul, if we get into a recession, you know, off the back of this just now, and so many people are going to be in a situation where um, financial difficulty becomes a real thing, then that's going to have a knock-on effect to the economy. And then you're going to start seeing house prices dropping and so forth. If we go into a recession, does that mean that we should wait until the recession comes before we buy? So I think the best way to try and explain this is to talk about the last recession, which happened in 2008. The funny thing is, is every recession, if you go and study the cycles, are the exact same. Some last a little bit longer than others. Some um, are more dramatic than others. But everyone thinks the next recession is going to be the worst. And it always bounces back. You know, you need to separate yourself from the bigger picture and see and look at it and go, well, I get it, everything works in cycles. But no one likes that information. Everyone gets caught up with what's happening. So with that in mind, 2008, really the world woke up when Lehman Brothers closed its doors. And that's when everyone realized that we were in deep shit, that we were in a proper global financial crisis. And it was caused through credit. You know, most people back here in the UK will remember Northern Rock with 120% loan-to-value mortgages, which means you could buy a property, let's say it was worth 100000 they would give you 120000 Why? Because everyone then thought the property was going to go up by 10 to 15% every single year. So you had new build developers acquiring land, paying stupid money for that land, and they could just sit on that land for two, three, four years and then build the houses then. Why? Because house prices will have gone up in value substantially, so they can overpay for the land. But that was so much that was happening in the marketplace back then. You know, people were just going crazy with credit, you know, taking out all sorts of loans, credit cards. I mean, I remember coming out of university, getting thrown all sorts of credit um, from, you know, I mean, anybody would give you money, store cards, loans, overdrafts, um, credit cards. I mean, it was just crazy. It was really the time of credit and everybody was living on credit. So when the credit crunch happened, you know, we started to see, um, again, stocks and shares being affected and so forth. And then property prices started to drop, but it never dropped overnight because property really bottomed out towards the end of 2011 to the start of 2012. So the analogy I like to explain is that even in 2008 when the recession was declared, let's say in a street there's 10 properties and all those properties, just to keep the numbers simple, are worth 100,000 pounds. Then when it's a seller's market, 
as in the sellers selling a property and there's more buyers. So as a generalization, which is happening right now in the current marketplace, for every property that's on the market, there's like 10 buyers. It's a generalization, but that's much of what's happening just now. So that means the seller can wait for the best possible offer. So this is what happened in 2008. Basically, you know, when the recession kicked in, it started to change a little bit, but that changed over like a three-year process where it was still a seller's market. Just because the recession was declared, not everyone lost their job overnight. That takes time. So you need to look at the lag period of people losing their jobs, people falling into financial difficulty, you know, stress kicking in and people wanting to go through separations because of everything that's happening, which is tied to financial, you know, hardship, people wanting to immigrate, downsize, you know, all of this stuff. So, so everything has got a knock-on effect, but it doesn't happen overnight in the property world. So while it's a seller's market like it is right now, the seller can wait for the best possible price. And that's why you're seeing right now properties going over market value. I mean, we've recently sold a bunch of properties that went way over market value. You're getting a premium. And you're only getting that premium because of supply and demand. There, there's more you know, buyers than there are sellers. So the same analogy of 10 properties, all of £100,000. What happens, and you need to keep a pulse on this, is that when it changes from a seller's market to a buyer's market, what you're going to find is that there's 10 properties for sale and there's only one buyer. So that buyer can then go to each of those sellers and say, I'll give you 70,000, I'll give you 70,000, I'll give you 70. So he gives all 10 people an offer of 70,000 pounds and it's the first motivated one out of all of them to accept it. Now that doesn't mean that overnight the rest of those properties are now worth 70,000. That was just one property. And you understand through property investing, you're always looking for comparables. Just like if one property sold for 130,000, 30,000 pounds over the value, it doesn't make all the properties now worth 130. It works both ways. You need patterns, you need you know, a number of properties to be selling. So all it takes is another motivated seller in the same kind of area to sell for 80,000. Then another one to sell for 85 then another one to sell for 90. And then a severe when they go out to value on behalf of the bank or on behalf of an investor or whoever is instructing the severe, the severe's got enough comparables, not just one or two, there's enough that have all happened in a certain time frame to go, okay, houses are just not selling at 100,000 in this area anymore. The, the, the likelihood is it's going to be 90 to 95. And then that there still takes a number of months, a number of years to things to really bottom out. And this is what I like about property. There's two things. One thing I like about, well, there's lots of things I like about property, but when it comes to, when it comes to this year, there's two things. Is it one positive, one negative? The positive thing is, is that it's slow. So what I mean by that is, is it's easy for you to predict and to see things. It's not like stocks and shares, like overnight it's dropped by 30% or something like that. Then the next day it's up, next day it's down. It's just not like that. It's all governed by supply and demand. And the thing that's a negative towards it is that if you're not aware and you don't know how to look at this and how to assess property values and assess opportunities and you don't have a good investment criteria, which so many people pre-2008 did not have. They were just buying everything and anything, thinking they were making money. It was living the dream. You buy a property, if you've got property, you're always gonna make big bucks. And that's the negative just now because a lot of people will get caught out. And if you get caught out, it's not as easy just to liquidate that property if it ends up being a negative equity because you never bought it well in the first place. So when you're Get into the property market now more than ever. You need to make sure that you're buying right with strong investment criteria. And that was a big focus at the weekend. There it was really two things: one, how do we adapt with the marketplace, and more importantly, thrive. And the one thing that I always stress, and I'm stressing this to our protégés, I stress this to anyone you guys listening, is that you've got to be ahead of the game. Because if you're sitting there back just waiting for something to happen, then it goes back to you're not leading. It all goes back to leadership. You've got to be aware of what's happening just now. Don't allow it to consume you, but understand that you make money through property when you buy right 
you add the right level of value, you know your numbers, and you've got the right people around you to support you and help you. So now more than ever, knowledge is, is extremely important. It's getting clear on the right investments that you should be making, the right strategies and so forth. And I always talk about that you don't have a property business if it's cycle dependent. You know, if you've only got a property business, I mean, everybody can make money when the property market's, you know, going up because, you know, the man in the street, the woman in the street can just buy a property next year has gone up in value. There's no science to that. But again, they'll get caught out if they're not buying right. They've not got the right investment criteria and so forth. A plateau market is when finance is difficult to get. Not a lot's happening in the marketplace. And arguably, that's a tough marketplace to operate in. And in a downward market, that's where there's all this uncertainty. That's where people lose their shit, freak out and panic except from the, the real professional investors that know how to go in there and to assist and help people in the situations they find themselves in, at the same time to be able to buy property, build a portfolio, and continue to grow and thrive through that. So twofold here, one, if you're already involved in property, because this is This Week in Property, and you're probably maybe looking to get involved in property, maybe got a couple of properties, or an experienced investor, then now, more than ever, you've got to be diligent. That was my big message of Protege last week, is that everything that's happened just now with this COVID-19, the coronavirus and so forth, this is a wake-up call. This is what it is. Because before the recession in 2008, people could see that we were walking off the edge of a cliff. I was too young to see this. I mean, uh, <laughs> um, I was already poor. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the truth. I never I never had much at that time. So the recession was like, what what recession? Weren't we already in a recession for my whole life? <laughs> so, so so for me, it was um, it wasn't like really affected me. I just realised that things got tougher and tighter. But most people were in denial that we were literally walking into a recession. This is pre two thousand and eight, and that was a major wake up call. Now what's happening right now? Now, listen, of course, um, those who are vulnerable, those who have got weakened immune systems, those who are elderly, underlying issues, you know, of course, this is, we're going to lose some people, you know, that, you know, God forbid that it's not lots, hopefully we can get this under control, and everyone needs to really practice this whole social distancing, but more importantly, um, social, uh, no, social care in the sense of looking after not only yourself, but those that you can, I get looking out for those people, keeping in touch with them. It's great that we can do FaceTime and video calls with people. So we know that we need to do something from that point of view. But what, what's happened here is that it's a wake-up call for everyone who's been coasting, who's been complacent, who's been sitting there thinking that it's all glory days and it's all going to keep on going up and we're always going to be making money. And that's concerning. So for, for, for everybody, this is a wake-up call to realize that this has come out of nowhere and it's just shown how bad most businesses are run. Now, if this goes on for a long period of time, even the best of businesses will struggle. Maybe, we'll maybe talk about the government stimulus package and all that stuff because I believe what that's going to do is it's a good, I honestly think it's a good thing right now. I genuinely do. But really what we're doing is we're pouring gasoline on a fire right now with all this stimulation. That's going to cause a rebound effect. And then it's going to cause um, probably the biggest recession that we've had that will look like the Great Depression. Because the, this bubble, it can't, I mean, it, the, the, there's so much stimulus being pumped in globally that, that countries are bankrupt. Countries, countries can't afford to ever pay their debt back. It just won't ever happen. So there's got to be a, a knock on effect to that. And that is going to be the global financial crash. So we can get into that. So from our point of view, this is a wake up call for every single person. And a story I like to tell is that when the tide is out, when the tide goes out, you can see all the rocks, you can see the seaweed, you see the litter, you see all the not so pretty things when the, the tide goes out. And that's what it's like right now with lots of businesses just now, even those who are employed. Because right now, there's so many people talking about they would love to invest in property, they would love to have an extra income, but the reason why they've not taken that step is because they're, they're living the dream. Things are happening. They're too comfortable. And then something like this comes out of nowhere and they're like, shit, it just shows you how much security you actually have. There's no such thing as job security. So with this in mind, 
they, everybody who finds themselves in that situation, you need to start looking at other ways. And if you're sitting there listening and thinking about property, then now's the time to be getting the right knowledge. Now's the time to lead in your finances and understand that this here, if you have been complacent, this is your wake up call to start looking seriously about starting that other business you've been thinking about, starting to sell that product you wanted to sell, start investing in property or getting the knowledge or whatever that may be. You can't allow another six months, another year to pass, knowing what the inevitable was going to be and not know that you had a chance to make some changes right now. And this is so important because when the tide is out, you can start to see everything for what it is. Because when the tide is in, everything's rosy, everything's great. You don't see it all. You get complacent, you get comfortable. You know, you start settling inside your comfort zone. And then right now, that wake-up call more than ever is a chance for everybody to really get their shit together. Yeah, totally. No, some great advice there. Two, two of the areas you touched upon there, um, you went through thinking about really, really properly analysing opportunities, checking you've got the right values, checking you're buying correctly at the start, not just being complacent, actually getting your numbers right, getting the comparables right, so on and so forth. You also spoke about being able to pull yourself back, have the right mindset, look at things properly, don't become emotional as we touched upon earlier. Those two areas in particular, due diligence, mindset, is that why you deliberately design your protege training program to have a big focus on those two things, due diligence and mindset? And are they two of the key areas that you've seen people in the past making most of their mistakes? Yeah, I mean, mindset's the number one thing that makes the biggest difference in everything that we do. You know, I can teach strategies on how to thrive through uncertain times. I can teach how to grip and raise finance during uncertain times. You know, I can teach lots of different things. But if you just take that knowledge and put that onto a faulty operating system, then you're not going to excel. You're really not going to take things on like you should. You maybe, you know, you're, you're, you're maybe, um, you maybe not just go forward with certain things because the mind holds you back a lot. And it's like most people are running on a, a Windows 2000 mindset. You know, if you think about it, who on earth would even operate on an operating system like that? It's just crazy to think that that's what people's minds are like, so, uh, you know, with, with everything that's going on. So this is why we always talk about mindsets, the biggest difference. The first thing right now when we talk about a mindset is everything that's happened out there, just now, everything that's going on in the world, all the media, all this, this fear that's getting instilled into us is that we either allow that to happen to us, we consume that, and, and we're not aware that what the knock-on effect of that is. I mean, if you just sit and watch um, you know, the media constantly, you're watching the news, you will go on a downward spiral and end up feeling bouts of depression, feeling that what's the point of living, it's all doom and gloom, everybody's going to die, it's the apocalypse, it's, you know, there's no point going to work, there's no point going doing this or whatever. You know, you will go down that downward spiral. I mean, when Alexa and I went from our event in London and we arrived at the airport, we arrived a little bit early, every single TV in the lounge was on and it was all doom and gloom. People were, you could feel it in the air. People walking around, you had those with the masks on and the suits on and, you know, and, and people were really like, one person would cough and everybody was freaking out and it, you could just totally feel the tension. And then when you get back, everybody's talking about it. There's all this negativity. Now, you've got to be aware. You've got to be aware. I'm not saying you should just block all of this out. You've got to be aware. You need to understand how much time are you spending on watching the media stuff? How much time are you spending on your social media newsfeed watching all these videos, all this conflicting information? all these stories about people dying, people losing their jobs and all of this kind of stuff. If that's what you're feeding yourself daily, then no wonder why you're feeling depressed. No wonder you feel like you can't go and take action. No wonder you're, you're fearful of the economy and what to come. No wonder you can't see any opportunities. But on the flip side, if you understand that everything out there is not within your control, 
The only thing that is within your control is how you respond to all of this. So for myself personally, I mean, I'm not perfect. I found myself in moments where I've been spending too much time looking at some of this stuff and getting caught up in things and having little moments of self-doubt, but I catch it. And that's key. And this comes through all the mindset training that we talk about is to be aware, to become conscious aware, to realize when you're starting to not feel how you should feel because of what you're feeding yourself, because of what you're taking on board. And I really enjoyed the last couple of days when I was doing the, the live um, broadcast and so forth because I was almost literally shielded from everything that was happening out there. And that's why I was on fire. I was really enjoying things. I was delivering my best content. I really, I really just really enjoyed my thing. Interactive engaging and the feedback, people were loving it. And it's because we went into our own little bubble. We were aware very aware of what's happening out there, but how we respond to it. I mean, the crazy thing is, is that I've got two young daughters, and this is for anybody who's got kids. And Richard, you've got, um, you know, some that are a little bit older than mine as well. And they'll be aware of what's going on. My two daughters are not aware. They're too young. They're not watching the news and so forth or nothing. But your daughter's been a little bit older. They will pretty much be aware of what's happening, especially because schools have been closed and so forth. But our kids, your kids, everybody's kids here, those that have got kids or your family around you, like when the kids grow up in 10 years, 20 years from now, they will remember what happened in 2020 because people will be talking about it and so forth. But the one thing, you know, they won't understand the true impact, but what they will remember, what will stick with them is how their parents reacted through that. Was there a lot of stress? Was there, you know, was there a lot of arguments in the household? Was there a lot of like financial burdens and so forth? Were you screaming and shouting about things? And were you panic buying and buying lots of toilet roll and lots of this thing and all this stuff? The kid, because the kids are always watching. I know my two are only two and three, but they're watching. There's times where, um, you know, I'll come off a call and I've been really focused on that call and helping someone. I come off and like Hannah is only two, will come up to me and she's saying, Are you okay, Papa? And I'm like, of course, darling. Okay. So they sense things. So don't think that, don't be so naive to think that they don't. So with this in mind, those around you, and I'm just using this from your household because pretty much most people are in lockdown, right? Or will be officially, who knows? But with this in mind, this then moves out into the rest of your family and how you lead and react. Then it goes out to your, your work colleagues or your staff if you employ people. Then it goes out to your clients and your wider network. How you react to all of this doesn't just affect you. It affects everybody around you as well. And this is why we need to step up and understand and be aware of what's happening. But realize what we're feeding ourselves. And understanding that you have a responsibility to lead to try and take everybody out, those closer to take their minds out of being consumed by all, all this negativity and help them lead in their own households. And that then will have that butterfly effect to help many others as well. And I hope that this is what comes across for those that listen to this, this podcast here as well, is that, that if you react differently to this, because that's the only thing that's in, within your control, then that's going to have a knock-on effect to those closest to you who matter the most. Yeah, totally. Great, great points. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we are obviously getting this information out quickly. We're dealing with things. We're trying to respond, trying to help. So where are we now? Well, let's kind of date stamp this. We've had quite a few publications from uh, the government. And, you know, there's advice and suggestions and they're starting to lock down certain areas and so forth. Not really forceful. We can talk about the ambiguity of the, the messages, unfortunately. Um, but they've released packages. They are reaching out and saying things like, okay, for employers, uh, we can help you support, you know, a certain percentage of salaries and stuff. For businesses, there's all sorts of things with uh, grants, loans, interest-free loans, uh, VAT we've just heard is getting frozen and kind of carried forward in time. You mentioned earlier, there's a kind of short-term, long-term thing. Have you got that analysis then that short-term, you're looking at things and thinking, oh, that's good, and a business should look at these things. But at the same time, you're also thinking to yourself, you mentioned long term, it's just pumping more air in, into that, that bubble. And at some point, it's really, really going to burst. Is that what you mean by that awareness, to be able to step back and see both realities? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, right now what's happening, it's, it's again, no one could have predicted this. So the government are having to react. Um, the US have got a trillion dollar stimulus package and it's still not been pushed through as of yet. That might happen in the next coming days. Um, in the UK, uh, we just had, um, you know, the Chancellor come out and, and came out with a whole different things to assess with businesses, to assess people. I mean, from that point of view, we can talk about some of those things specifically, but right now, if you think about it, um, the money that's in the marketplace just now hasn't disappeared. So we need to keep that in mind. Sure, businesses have been affected right now. Some industries are thriving. Some industries are selling a lot of stuff and in demand, but we need to understand how quick can they get their pipeline? How, how, is, their, how is their production line in the sense of they might sell a lot of stuff just now, but are they having a knock-on effect in four weeks, six weeks' time because they can't get the, the supply of the next wave of whatever they need, such as paracetamol. And, you know, paracetamol is one of those things that if you're, you're lucky if you can even get this kind of stuff. You know, toilet roll hasn't made its way out. Food still is coming in, but there's certain things that, that you sure you sell a lot of it, and then the production line takes a lot longer before it comes. So some businesses might thrive at this moment, but have a knock-on effect coming. Other businesses such as restaurants, clubs, pubs, you know, um, events businesses, all, I mean, lots of industries. I mean, you think about the, the, you know, the airline industries, there's just so many to count. Lots are getting affected. And the money that would normally go into all of those businesses and keep things going, it's not disappeared, it's still there. Keep that in mind, it's still somewhere. And then with the government, with their stimulus package, getting put into the economy, such as, um, you know, helping with employees. I think it's looking like 80% that they're going to assist with their wages. And um, talking about, you know, suspending um, VAT for this, this period here and then delaying the process and we need to pay it back. We're talking about government interest, free loans for 12 months, the, the coronavirus um, interruption loan scheme that's really going to be more information getting released this week. Um, you know, they're talking about even um, your, your self assessment tax that's due in July, pushing that off to January as well. I mean, um, mortgage breaks and so forth. So all of these things here, what you need to understand is a few things and be really aware of this, is that although you might be tempted just to take a three month mortgage break, I would probably say don't if you don't have to, because that money needs to be paid at some point. And that's a knock on effect, you're just kicking it down the the, the, the road a little bit here. Taking loans and all of this stuff, if your business needs it, and most businesses will, then go for it, for sure. You know, um, don't just go and use this to spend your VAT money and spend your tax money. Now, if you need to, to cash flow your business, because the tide is out now, and you realize, oh, wait a wee minute, it's a wake up call. I never had the cash flow I thought, never had a strong enough business that I thought. I'm actually living, you know, month or two months away from being broke then take this as a wake-up call and use that to cash flow yourself out, but understand that all of this stuff needs to be paid back. Now you've got this pent up you know, demand that's going to come because of all this money that's going to be coming from the, the stimulus that's going to be making its way into the market over the coming weeks, coming months, and then all the money that, that's not getting spent will then go back into the market. So we'll see what's like a, a V-shape, it'll be like a little bit of a rebound. So that rebound is coming. We don't know when that will be because right now, um, the UK isn't an official lockdown. However, if people don't continue with the message of social distancing to really flatten this curve, there's a whole, you know, the, you know if you think about it in China, they had sharp you know, cases of new people getting affected and so forth, and other countries start to follow suit in the sense of Italy started going, okay, let's go to lockdown. And the reason is, is trying to not have a spike in new cases, is to try and flatten the curve. And that's what the UK is trying to do just now because the NHS would just be so overwhelmed. They're already overwhelmed. And if more and more cases started coming out because more and more people get affected, they would just be at a meltdown. So if we don't do the social distancing and really understand what, what we need to be doing here as a community, as a, as a country and so forth, then we will go into official lockdown. We will get locked down. So that might happen. It might not. The next time we have a call, it might have, or it might have still been pushed along a little bit. But when that happens, we don't know how long that's going to be. In the States, 
in some states, they've actually extended that period now. So they're in lockdown, they're extending it, what looks like it's going to be to the middle of April and so forth. We're talking about schools not going to go back until after summer. And all of this here, all of this uncertainty, remember, and, you know, we don't know what to do. We might, it might be two months, maybe three months, maybe six months. We just don't know. So that rebound will come when we start integrating back into society, when we get back out there and things start to change and people start getting a bit more confidence to spend again and so forth. That stimulus is coming in. But then, you know, what you're going to start to see is that that money will be used up relatively quickly. And then we're just walking into a global recession. And we're looking at a global recession in the sense of how can you pump more money into economy when it's already broke? And we're realizing through what this wake up call just now that how many businesses that are just not running efficiently, that, that, that with all this debt that comes along with it because it needs to be paid back at some time, you know, there's going to be this knock on effect inside of 2021. And it's quite scary to think what's actually going to happen. And, and Governments can't always just bail you out. It's not possible. I don't think you're going to see what happened in 2008 where governments were bailing out you know, companies left, right and centre, banks left, right and centre. This is going to be very, very different. It really is. So we should not be fearful of this. Warren Buffett says, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. So we're aware. We need to look at the opportunities by checking where our mindsets are going and where we're getting our focus is and, and leading, understanding what's within your controls, how you react to things, work on that mindset, get the right knowledge, start to be aware of what's happening, understand with property you've got that benefit of a lag period, understand what is coming, the reality of it, understand how can we see the opportunities right now to adapt and thrive but more importantly, not just sitting there waiting for the government to look after us. Because if you're just sitting there waiting for the government to look after you, then, like right now, the self-employed folk didn't get the best deal out of what the government have, have put out. But those self-employed people, more than ever, they really need to get their shit together. Because you should not be relying on the government to have this bailout. What, what's happening right now, we need it. We, we 100% need it. But if you're leading, you can't just lead in one area of your life. You need to lead in your financial side of your life and your relationships and your health and everything that you do, leading other people. So when you're leading your finances, you should never be relying on the government to look after you. You've got to be thinking, what can I do to make sure that I'm well positioned so when the recession comes, which is inevitable, we might walk straight into recession off the back of this, or it might be delayed a little bit towards the end of the year, most definitely end happening in 2021. How can you be prepared for then by getting your stuff together right now and understanding that this is a wake-up call? Brilliant stuff. I think that is a great way to end it because you brought together so many areas of analysing the current situation, dealing with opportunities that are there, but also having the brains and a long-term focus to know how to use those subsidies, whatever you want to call them, properly, not undermine your business even more and make sure, yeah, are you actually reviewing how you are? Are you looking at the tide? Are you looking at the shoreline? How is your business set up? It was, it was perfect. Now, I want to be respectful of this man's time. He has got a lot of clients he needs to help, whole raft of people in his protege plan that he's helping, or another group of clients in his platinum program that he needs to look after. There's loads of different opportunities you're looking at just now. I know there's a lot of different land sites that you're analyzing, etc. But can I ask you to commit to something? Can you stay by the back phone? If this week in property calls you out, because obviously this is a fast moving scenario, you know, things are coming out every single day, even hourly sometimes. If this week in property rings your back phone, could we maybe pull you back in and just get your take on the big things that happen as we go along? Absolutely, for sure. I mean, Fine. now more than ever, getting the right knowledge, keeping a pulse on things is important. I mean, for those who are maybe thinking about um, getting their starting property, are looking to accelerate the property journey those that are looking to get that knowledge is going to make a big difference and be ahead of the game and especially with everything that's happened just now there's no better time to get that study in and maybe pop over to propertyprotege.com and check that because if you come into our community welcome into our tribe you know we'll support you through all of these uncertain times so you can adapt and thrive through this 
Yeah, totally. Yeah, that, that support thing is, is a great thing to see. Actually, I, I took a lot of satisfaction from that because you could see loads of those people just helping each other to pass on information, recommendation, contacts, you name it. Uh, people like Jacqueline is, you know, hooking up and talking about how many deals she's doing, how many collaborations she's doing with other people in the tribe. And she said it herself, she says, I, I don't know how I would be without this support. I don't know how I would be without this group around me. Because if I get dragged away with tabloid newspaper headlines and stuff, you know, she doesn't know how she would react. But thankfully, she's in that safe place, that safe group of people like-minded, people helping each other. And she knows and they know that they can rely on leaders like yourself to pop in and give an extra level of support and an extra level of awareness and, and things to look at. It's, it's brilliant. It's a great, great thing in these uncertain times. So, Paul, it's good to know we've got you on the back phone. I can see myself using that. I think we can probably see yourself very quickly. So make sure everyone who's watching, listening, make sure you're subscribed because we are not on a regular program structure here. Things are happening quickly. And if I can grab this man back in, uh, make sure that you know that it's going to happen. So make sure you, you are subscribed. Paul, for your time just now, thanks a million. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as I did. Remember, with the guests that you just saw, go into the show notes for the page because all of their links are there so that you can get in touch and to get more information. And talking about getting more information, more guests, more insights, more knowledge, etc., make sure you're subscribed. Get the subscription done, get the notifications on, and then we'll always keep in touch with you every single time a brand new show is going to come out. So thanks for tuning to This Week in Property.